Me and Gebek. Hi. She's an all-around cyclist that so loves to ride a road bike with her friends, as well as trails in the mountains. A BMC rider, she has an extensive quiver of sweet BMC bikes to choose from for when she goes out riding. She has a road bike, an endurance XC bike, a trail bike, plus a long travel all mountain bike. She also has a really nice cross country hardtail that hasn't gotten a lot of use lately. She doesn't have a gravel bike though, so we decided on an experiment. Our plan? Transform her XC hardtail into a gravel specific ride by swapping out the suspension fork for a lightweight rigid carbon in the mountain fork. Out of the box, this lightweight fork is a beautiful thing. It sits at or near the top of its class for lightweight, features a proper axle to crown length, plenty of tire clearance, plus two settings for rake to fine tune the ride. For a fork that's meant to simplify the riding experience, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Before installing the lightweight carbon wonder fork, I weighed the bike for a before snapshot of the Team Elite. So we can get an idea of how much weight we're going to save by switching to the rigid. Scale comes in at 23.9 pounds. That is with pedals installed. Okay, pull this race off and then we can install the new fork. Got most of this off in the garage, the messy garage. And now I'm just finishing off, doing a little leveraging. And time to install a new one. And uh, there's some crown race setters for as low as 25 bucks online. And I'm gonna buy one, because I'm tired of doing this. I probably install a couple headsets a year, but I try to have all the tools I need to do all the work on a bike, so it's long overdue. After a bit of a break, I was back at it. There are still a few tools I'm lacking, and a Crown Race Setter for 1.5 steers is near the top of that list. I also could really use a quality vise. Gotta say it, that is one good looking fork. And now it's time to cut the steer. Remember? Measure twice, cut once. Envy recommends 100 grit sandpaper for sanding down the edges. We're going to be creating a bevel on the edge of that steer tube. Steer tube's cut. Time to install it. Before we install the fork, let's uh, do a quick nerd alert and uh, show the sucker up on the scale. Set that at zero. 1600 grams. And in pounds, that's 3.53 pounds. One point three seven pounds. Woo! That's six hundred and twenty grams or point six two zero kilograms. Yes, Inga is gonna be psyched. And let's pipe it down. I'm gonna try 
these all at the bottom for now. I think that's the little crown. Went a little bit lower. I actually didn't bother measuring. Um, just soon have a run it high for now, and then we can always put the spacers underneath. Okay. Just a quick light layer here. Okay, before I install that little star nut setter, I'm gonna add a little friction paste to the steer just because it is a, uh, it's a carbon steer. You know, that's just a good idea. This is the Lysine Torque Drive. It's basically a little trial portable torque wrench set. I think I actually got it for me, uh, I think two Christmases ago. Um, the irony is I mostly use it on her bikes. That's gonna go eight Newton meters. All right, time to install some brakes. The cable routing, these are really cool little clips that come on and off. We're gonna run the integrated fenders instead, which actually serves the same purpose. Plus it just looks really cool. So to get this installed, slide that through that like so. And just push it on. Woo, there we go. That is a gorgeous piece of bike parts. And you'd expect it to be for 625 bucks retail, but dang, it's pretty darn nice. Wouldn't it be funny if this didn't fit? Not really. All right, looks like I just need to adjust my calipers and center the brakes. And we can take this thing for a test drive. All right, moment of truth. Throw it up on the scale, see what she weighs. So light. 21.72 pounds. That's pretty light for mountain bike, if you ask me. I think it's good looking. It's nice to do rides from a front door. Living in Portland, that means miles and miles of paved bike and multi-use paths in order to connect to actual dirt or gravel. Do you need a gravel bike to travel gravel roads? Of course not. In fact, I believe starting from a mountain bike is a better option in some cases. If you follow other industry trends, it looks like the rest of the bike world is coming around as well, especially when it comes to riser bars. We see a lot of cross bikes and gravel bikes with flat bar conversions, and it really doesn't make sense from a geometry fit perspective. Driver bikes are designed accounting for the integrated reach of the bars as part of the equation. So simply swapping out a drop bar and brakes for a riser bar can really throw a wrench in your fit. We've logged a few solid rides in the hills today, and so far Ingo's loving the light, minimal weight of the BMC with rigid fork. That said, with many of our road ride companions also invested in dedicated gravel bikes, her 2.2 XC tires are going to be running slow in comparison, which leads to our next change up in gear, tires. We're going to plan to take it one step further. BMC is sending out their latest gravel bike for Inga to spend some time on. We're planning to ride them back to back in order to get a solid, in-depth look at the benefits and strength from each approach. In the meantime, keep on riding and subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified when follow-up videos go live.